Hello and welcome back to Drama Investigator. Before we get into today's investigation, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I post the tea. Here for the tea recently got doxxed in one of John Cookian's videos. I think John was trying to apologise to Peter Mon for falsely accusing him of being a PEDO. I'm not quite sure what was going on there, but in the process he exposed Here for the Tea's full name, which I will not include in this video. Doxing is highly illegal in many countries. You can go to prison for doxing and have to pay victims compensation for doxing. So I guess that's just another criminal conviction coming John Cookian's way. Here for the Tea has also been in a bit of drama this week after she reported on Juvia's place, allegedly treating their customers poorly. She had taken to her Instagram and had posted this. Juvia's place is at it again. Here we go again. Juvia's place treating paying customers poorly. Here we can see a screenshot of Juvia's place private messaging a customer this. Sis, you definitely need that makeup to cover you up. Sis. Crying face, I definitely don't but okay, we'll send it to you for free. And here we can see here for the tea, also fighting with Beauty Bakery on Twitter. She had tweeted, funny because you were pretty rude to me in DMs when I was trying to understand why you were promising PR to influencers and then either turning around and making them sign up to be added or in one case asking an influencer to sign a contract after sending them PR. Beauty Bakery had responded, we weren't rude to you. You wanted there to be malice for people not getting PR packages and you were seeking to tear down a black owned business when the reality is what I told you it was. If someone didn't receive a package, a brand relies on employees to track it. The program ended during that time, so share the receipts and stop being messy and divisive. Here we can see the owner of Juvia's Place taking to her personal Instagram to expose here for the tea. She had said, okay, excuse my ignorance. I don't follow society standards for stupid positions that add zero value. The title CEO means absolutely nothing to me. Forgive me people. My response to Samantha. Samantha. Blank. Our details are everywhere on Twitter. It's public knowledge. Still baffles me how your identity must be protected, but yet others must suffer the whores of cyberbullying through your heavily skewed content. A beauty blogger turned into the beauty community gatekeeper racist, who constantly turns black people against each other. Well, you better be Samantha's friend. If not, you're dead and cancelled. She turns a blind eye to the woes of her inner circles, but yet you dare not say a word back, and if you do, oh lord, you will suffer her anger of cancellation. She ignores proof from opposing sides, but yet she believes she has the power and ability to destroy. I'm not afraid of you, lady. Yes, poor practices must be called out. Is there a fine line between a call out, constructive criticism, and straight up cyberbullying, aggravated by twisted stories to get a sick narrative? Samantha, are you racist? I saw you tearing down another black brand weeks ago, after the JP catastrophe in the summer. I've heard of you calling a black woman Peppa Pig. I want to believe you are not racist, but you are indeed a bully. Will it take a suicidal event for this to end? Don't get me wrong now. JP he has issues and lots of it. Customer service being one of them. Something we would continue to work on. If you have placed an order and have not received it, please do not abuse us mercilessly. We are human beings and then you twist the story. Simply send us an email. We assure you, you will receive your products. Our customer service email is support at juviasplace.com. Support hours are Monday to Friday, 8am to 5pm EST. Simply means if you send a request on a Saturday night, you will receive an update on a Monday morning. Thank you. CEO, the C CEO that hypocritical comments will disappear into space. Here we can see a private message that was leaked that was sent to Samantha. I know you derive pleasure from tearing brands and people down with your constant bullying in the name of spreading lies and twisted stories to fit your sick narrative. I guess it would have to take a suicide in the beauty community for you to know there's a huge difference between investigative journalism and pure bullying. Sis, you are a bully. I would think as a drama channel you would seek information from both ends, but that is never the case here. Samantha Blank, I'm not afraid of you sis. Petty Page had responded to this drama by stating, My thoughts? I mean, Chi Chi is not wrong. She's extremely divisive, does not support black owned brands, but seems to be the gatekeeper of using black anger to divide the black community and not support their own, allowing her following to coon their own community. At this point, Sis hasn't put a single job into the stratosphere for a person of colour, yet wants to destroy a brand that has majority POC working for them, in turn taking away jobs from a minority community. I'm not here for that tea. Also, unless you attempt to get both sides, there's an agenda. There's a multitude of ways of getting in touch with a brand, even if they do block you. At least you can say, we reached out for a statement, pending reply. Then the ball is in their court. What are your thoughts on this drama? Let me know in the comments. In more news, Jeffree Star recently highlighted some more dodgy things going down in the makeup slash beauty industry. He had tweeted, This makes me effing sick. Brands having their own employees post fake reviews to manipulate the customer. Huge lawsuit was settled today. Wow. The Federal Trade Commission is not playing games. Jeffree Star had also 
included a link to the Federal Trade Commission's tweet exposing the cosmetics firm Sunday Riley. In the Sunday Riley case, FTC alleges that between November 2015 and August 2017, Sunday Riley skincare managers, including Ms Riley herself, posted reviews of their branded products on the Sephora site using fake accounts created to hide their identity and requested other employees do the same. So this drama actually came out when a former employee of Sunday Riley exposed what the company was doing on Reddit. They had posted, Sunday Riley employee, we write fake Sephora reviews. This is a throwaway account because Sunday Riley is majorly vindictive. I'm showing this because I'm no longer an employee there and they are one of the most awful places to work, but especially for the people who shop us at Sephora because a lot of the really great reviews you read are fake. We were forced to write fake reviews for our products on an ongoing basis, which came direct from Sunday Riley herself and her head of sales. I saved one of those emails to share here. Also check out the Glassdoor reviews for Sunday Riley, the ones that we weren't asked to write anyway, which are accurate AF. Here we can see this email that Sunday Riley had sent her employees. Hi all, now that Saturn is up and Space Race coming up next week, we need to make sure that the reviews for clients stay positive and help generate and confidence in the products. Credibility is key to the reviews. If everyone could write at least three reviews for Saturn over the next week and some for Space Race the week after, I would encourage you to create profiles ASAP and write a couple reviews on a makeup, hair or nail product to build a great profile history. Please make sure to follow the guidelines for VPN, see below, as this is essential so the reviews don't get traced back to our IP address. When reviewing Saturn, please address things like how cooling it felt, the green colour, the non-drying mask effect, radiance boosting, got rid of your acne after a couple uses. The biggest points of difference for this mask and other acne masks are how this mask increases radiance and doesn't dry out the skin like all other acne masks do. It helps to make yourself seem relatable, like you know, how hard acne is and how you've tried everything and this one actually works or mentioning things like yes, it's a little more expensive but works incredibly well compared to the cheaper masks out there. If you need any help with things to come up with to say, feel free to ask myself, Sunday or Addison. As reviews come in, read them too. If you notice someone saying things like I didn't like X about it, write a review that says the opposite. The power of reviews is mighty, people look to what others are saying to persuade them and answer potential questions they have. Below are the ExpressVPN instructions, please do not forget any of these steps. Download and install ExpressVPN on your computer, erase all cookies from your computer, log into the VPN to hide your IP address, email blank, password blank, create an email account, Gmail, Yahoo, etc and then a Sephora account with the same login. Keep track of your usernames because you will want to use them again periodically on our products and others. When you create your Sephora profile, mix and match your identities pick different ages, locations, etc. Leave reviews for three to four non-SR products before you leave any for an SR product. The SR product reviews should be glowing, but do not mention other brands slash products or it will be flagged and pulled. Screenshot your review before you submit it. Reviews can be lengthy or short, just make sure they are effective with trying to sell the product to someone who may relate to what you say about it. Log out of VPN when done because only three users can be on at a time. Email blank your screenshot for the SR products review. If you skip any of step two to five, it's a waste of time because your review will be pulled. Happy reviewing, if you have any questions, please let me know. Then on the company's website itself, former employees had left reviews of their poor experiences working for the company and exposing more tea. A review states, don't ignore the red flags, one star. Former employee, anonymous employee in Houston, Texas. I worked at Sunday Riley full time. Pros, office snacks and nice office building. Cons, very poor communication from upper management. The company is dishonest with staff merchants and suppliers. Working at Sunday Riley is a nightmare. Long-term employees are sheep. If you do speak out or question upper management, you will be let go. I worked at Sunday Riley full time. Pros. Extremely fast paced environment and you will learn on the job quickly. Cons. There is absolutely no such thing as work life balance at this company. From the interview process to day to day work, time is not a factor, making it increasingly difficult to schedule anything outside work hours. There is no communication structure and all approvals are verbal, leaving a huge amount of room for error and miscommunication within team members. There is no formal training program for corporate staff. Company culture is non-existent and if you disagree with the founder in any way, consider yourself out. Expectations are extremely unrealistic for the time frame. Everything is produced at the very last minute. Advice to management. You are only as strong as your leader and the leadership team needs work. Without a true organisational structure and defined company culture, it will be difficult to retain top tier talent. On the Federal Trade Commission's website they had issued a statement saying, Sunday Riley is detailed in the FTC's complaint 
Paint, Texas-based Sunday Riley skincare sells a variety of cosmetic products including Lunar Sleeping Night Oil, Good Jeans All-in-One Lactic Acid Treatment, Blue Moon Tranquility Cleansing Balm, Start Over Active Eye Gel Cream, Bionic Anti-Aging Cream and CEO Rapid Flash Brightening Serum. The company sells its cosmetics at Sephora, a multinational chain of personal care and beauty stores and on the Sephora.com website. The products sell for between $22 and $158 each. Sephora allows consumers to leave customer reviews of products sold on its website, providing a forum for sharing authentic feedback about the products it sells. In its complaint, the FTC alleges that between November 2015 and August 2017, Sunday Riley skincare managers, including Ms Riley herself, posted reviews of their branded products on the Sephora site using fake accounts created to hide their identity, and requested that the other Sunday Riley skincare employees do the same thing. The FTC alleges that after Sephora removed fake employee written reviews, Sunday Riley skincare employees suspected this was because Sephora recognised the reviews as coming from their IP addresses. Sunday Riley skincare then allegedly obtained, according to one of the company's managers, an ExpressVPN account to blank, allow us to hide our IP addresses and location when we write reviews. A VPN, virtual private network, lets users access the internet privately by using separate servers to hide their online activity. The FTC complaint also quotes from a July 2016 email that Ms Riley wrote to her staff directing each of them to create three accounts on Sephora.com registered as dot 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 different identities. The email included step-by-step -step instructions for setting up new personas and using a VPN to hide their identities and directed employees to focus on certain products to always leave five stars when reviewing Sunday Riley skincare products and to dislike negative reviews. If you see a negative review, dislike it, Ms Riley wrote. After enough dislikes, it is removed. This directly translates into sales. The FTC's complaint charges Sunday Riley Skincare and Ms Riley with two violations of the FTC Act. One, making false or misleading claims that the fake review reflected the opinions of ordinary users of the products. And two, deceptively failing to disclose that the reviews were written by Ms Riley or her employees. The proposed administrative order settling the FTC's allegations against Sunday Riley Skincare and Ms Riley is intended to ensure the respondents do not engage in similar alleged allegedly illegal conduct in the future. First, the order prohibits the respondents, in connection with the sale of any product, from misrepresenting the status of any endorser or person reviewing the product. This includes misrepresentations that the endorser or reviewer is an independent or ordinary user of the product. Next, the order prohibits the respondents from making any representation about any consumer or other product endorser without clearly and conspicuously disclosing any unexpected material connection between the endorser and any respondent or entity affiliated with the product. Such disclosures must be made in close proximity to the product review or endorsement. In addition, the order requires the respondents to instruct their employees and agents about their responsibilities to clearly and conspicuously disclose their connections to the respondents' products and any endorsements. What are your thoughts on all this drama? Let me know in the comments. That's all for this investigation. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. My social media will be linked down below and I'll see you guys in our next investigation.